I'm Sean with EMF Audio, and this is the first ever Tech Stuff Tuesday. A uh, recent subject that has come up and uh, deserves some explanation is the myth of the speaker break-in. Now, don't confuse being broken in with the break-in procedure. Some manufacturers recommend a specific break-in procedure, and they say it's uh, to make sure the speaker performs in an optimal fashion. I'm going to show you why that's crap. Uh, at EMF, we say put it in, install it, go ham. Wide open, doesn't matter. I'm going to explain to you why. This is one of our low baller 12s. 750 watts RMS. I've got it on the test bench on a 12K, one of our America 12Ks, which again does not put out 12K the instant you turn it on. So if you're wondering why isn't it exploding, it's because it only puts out as much power as the volume adjusts. That's another video. So this is our 750 watt sub straight out of a box. This has never been installed in a car. It's gone through quality control testing, and that is it. So in this case, you may have manufacturers that say you have to uh, go to maybe... Uh, half power or half throw for you know, a, f a month or weeks or who knows. So that might be something like that. So that's not really doing anything but moving half throw. You're not you know, getting your enjoyment out of, out of the box. Not moving a whole lot, not a whole lot of power on it. You know, it might be half of rated RMS. So the thing here is you're not really moving the spiders, so you're not really breaking them in that much. What you can do is go full throw. And I'll do this straight out of the box, no problem. Because it doesn't matter. Now we're actually breaking in the spiders. Spiders are getting to full throw. They're actually stretching out. And that's what happens when you break it in. Those spiders start to loosen up. Now your specs will change from when it's super stiff, straight out of the box with zero play on it. And then after you go and play, things loosen up, specs change. Your QTS goes up. Your FS goes down. Uh, your VAS will go up. That's your suspension compliance. Several things happen. Uh, when you when you break it in and it's not just the coil that is getting uh, Broke or not just the spiders that are getting broken in. It's also the coil. So how does a coil break in? I've actually had people say you have to break in a sub because it's like an engine It's nothing like an engine at all. There are no components inside that are touching There's not a piston going through a cylinder with a ring in the middle that's rubbing or anything like that so in this case We've got a copper coil that has a coating on it, and uh, we can prove that coating. So we've got a DMM. If you touch the leads, we get a reading of 2.0 ohms. However, if we just touch the coil at any given spot, you get nothing, no continuity or anything because there's a protective coating on here. So when you're breaking in the coil, what happens is this coating will get hot and that's why you might smell something initially. And it might smell for a little while after you play it and then it eventually stops. That's from initially uh, having heat on that coating and that's what you're smelling. It's, it's burning off a little bit. And that also goes with outgassing. So in this case, we use a round wire coil. Um, for outgassing, all of the layers below here, when that heating starts to happen, it releases gas. That gas can seep out uh, through the gaps in the round wire. It doesn't lay like a solid brick. So that is one thing that will help with round coil or round wire coil. But if you have flat wire, it's, it, can, it can still outgas, but not as easily. So what can happen there, if you outgas too quickly, is the former will bubble. So down here, the coil will look fine out here, 
but down actually in the former you'll get bubbles in it where the gas couldn't release. So if you put way too much power on it straight out of the gate, yes it can outgas, cause a former bubbling and warp that, but we're not talking about putting rated power. We're talking about putting well overrated power. So you might have a 2000 watt sub that you're putting maybe four or five thousand watts on it for 20 30 seconds where it gets very very hot very very quickly not quite enough to make it fail but it is enough to make it very hot very fast in that case you might experience a problem and that depends on the coil if it's an eight layer coil you're more likely to experience that than you are a four layer coil or a two layer coil round wire versus flat wire it's not a guarantee that's the only time that could possibly happen uh, so that one might be the only other instance of breaking with the coil is because of outgassing. For the average user uh, that you're using it as intended, that's not going to happen. So what happens with the spiders when they actually break in? These are moving. So the small amount of movement is happening from the inside ridge, and these don't move so much out here. But the more volume you put on it, the more these move, and that gradually makes these move as you go out. So what I have seen happen on a very, very stiff spider like this one, this is actually six stiff spiders. If you only play at a low volume for a period of time, what will happen is these few rolls will get broken in. These won't move. So you'll have an uneven movement across these once you eventually turn it up. And over time, uh, these m will start to break in a little bit more, but initially you'll end up with it moves a lot and you get to a certain point and all of a sudden it stops moving as much. And that's because you're getting to where these are loose and these are stiff. Now the number of spiders does not dictate how stiff it is. There are several factors. This one is a very stiff material. There are six of them. Uh, the only instance that I've ever had where you might have to break one in a little bit prior to that is with seven of these. And as you can tell, by pushing on it, you can actually hear it cracking. And that's initial movement. So you can hear that cracking. That's what's happening when you move it. You'll hear some cracks and pops and that kind of thing. This is incredibly stiff. Adding a seventh one of these and then going straight to like 20 or 30,000 watts of power is the only time that you might have a problem. Um, where the, the joint might break. The spiders definitely will not tear on these. Uh, but where a joint might break, you might have some other problem when you're going to that very, very extreme point. Now, even with the six spiders and doing that, I've not seen the breakage. It has only been with seven of these and then going straight to 20 or 30,000 watts right out of the gate. So if you did like 10,000 watt burps, you know, a few of those ahead of time and then went to full volume, you wouldn't experience that problem. So on this spider, this is a uh, three-pack. That's a slightly different material. Uh, you can see the, the rolls are different. But this one, you can see how easily it flexes it, with no effort, no cracking, popping, anything like that. This will break in and actually get even looser than the other one will. It has to do with the material, the number of layers, and that kind of thing, the way the, the roll dynamics are. But they are very, very different. So there are manufacturers that say if you don't break a sub in, you can have over excursion. Well, over excursion is when your spider cannot accommodate how much it's trying to move. So if you have a gap here, over excursion would be when the spider runs out here, but the coil wants to keep moving. So you've got enough motor force to actually continue to force on the spider that will rip the spider. That has nothing to do with break-in. That has to do with a poor sub-design. You either need a shorter coil or a larger spider or different rolls on the spider. A different spider. Uh, so that would be over excursion which doesn't really make sense why they say it has anything to do with break-in. Um, the other point that I've seen where they say you can rip the spiders or break triple joints if you don't break it in properly. That goes back to a quality issue. Quality issue meaning you have poor quality spiders 
which I have seen, or poor assembly. You don't use proper adhesive, the proper amount of adhesive, anything like that. That's the only reason not breaking one in will damage, because the speaker is of poor quality, be it assembly, materials, or both. So, what do we know from all this? It doesn't matter the period of time that the sub breaks in over, it only matters that it actually gets broken in. So just put it in the box, play it however you want to, that's going to be fine. You don't need to do small volume or anything like that. It's not breaking in unless it's moving. Just put it in and play it. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Hit subscribe. We're going to do more of these every Tuesday on various subjects. So hit the subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up. Comment below on what you want to see in some other Tech Stuff Tuesdays.